Hello, here is a quick introduction into the AutoID TDR application for the HST3000. First, let's describe how a time domain reflectometer, or TDR, works. A TDR works similar to radar. It transmits a high frequency energy pulse down the copper pair and then looks for any reflections of energy that are returned. The signal will be reflected when it reaches an event such as a bridge tap, wet section, load coil, short, open, or splice just to name a few. The TDR then takes the reflected signal and displays a picture or trace of it on the screen. Since the TDR records the time when the initial pulse was sent and the time the reflection returned, the TDR can calculate the distance to the fault by using the speed of the signal or velocity of propagation. The velocity of propagation is determined by the physical attributes of the cable like gauge and fill type. For example, the velocity of propagation for 24 gauge air core is approximately 300 meters per second. Events such as shorts, opens, and bridge taps are shown on the TDR trace as dip downs, dip ups, or a combination of the two. These are due to a change in the impedance of the cable. If you're not familiar with the term impedance, think of it like this. An ohmmeter shows the total amount of resistance on the cable, however it doesn't take into account the amount of capacitance or inductance. So if there's water in the cable, you won't see that on your ohmmeter resistance reading. A cable's impedance includes resistance, capacitance, and inductance. So you can see the effects of cable damage, water ingress in the cable sheath, changes in cable gauge, etc. Generally, you'll see either downward dips, which indicate a decrease in impedance caused by a bridge tap, or a low resistance short across tip and ring, or you'll see upward dips, which indicate an increase in impedance caused by an open load coil, etc. A TDR is an excellent tool for detecting faults across tip and ring. However, while a TDR is very good at identifying certain types of faults, it's not so good at others. For instance, a TDR is not well suited for detecting ground faults like resistive shorts to ground or battery cross. It's also important to note that generally speaking, the distance displayed on a TDR is most accurate to the first event. Subsequent events can be detected but the distance displayed could be less precise. So you'll want to clear the first fault before moving on to any subsequent faults. The TDR in the HST3000 basically operates in two different modes, Auto ID or Manual. The Auto ID mode is kind of like an autopilot mode. In this mode, many of the key setup parameters are predetermined and the results are automatically identified and displayed. The Manual mode is highly configurable and allows for a wide range of test environments and applications. Over the next few minutes, we're going to discuss the Auto ID TDR mode. The screen you currently see is the main copper measurements menu. From here, you can launch the TDR application by either pressing the down arrow to highlight TDR and then press OK, or by pressing the number on the keypad, in this case number 4, which corresponds to TDR. Once the TDR application launches, press the second soft key Actions and ensure that Auto ID has a check mark next to it. If not, highlight Auto ID and press OK or select the number corresponding to it. Since changes in cable gauge will affect your TDR measurement, you should set the TVG Adjust to the predominant gauge of your pair before starting. To do that, press the up and down arrow keys and you'll see the numbers next to TVG adjust increase or decrease accordingly. TVG stands for time varying gain and will be more thoroughly explained in an upcoming session. Now press the four soft key start TDR to begin testing. When the auto ID first launches it gathers information about the pair. This mimics the proper technique for using a TDR. The TDR will cycle through a series of measurements which are indicated on the screen as each test is being run. You'll see testing voltage, then testing leakage resistance, which measures resistance with 120 volts applied to the line. Then you'll see testing balance, and lastly, testing TDR. After the test is completed, the results will be displayed in a graphical format. If a fault is detected, the TDR will show the distance and identification of that event on the screen. In this example, you'll notice that an open or high reflective event 
was detected. Now, let's go over what you see on the trace. We'll start at the top left hand corner of the screen and move clockwise. In the rectangular box at the top left, you see zero feet. In the rectangular box at the top right, you see 1,286 feet. These two numbers represent your viewing window. In the bottom right, you see that short range was auto-selected. In the bottom middle, you see the TVG, or time varying gain, was set for 26 gauge. Lastly, in the bottom left, you see cursor 1, 645 feet. This represents the position of the vertical dotted line in the center of the screen and can be adjusted to pinpoint the beginning of an event. Pressing the left and right arrow keys will move this cursor left and right. The cursor can also be moved by typing in a specific distance using the keypad. For example, press 0 and you'll notice the C1 field now says 0. Type in a different number for instance 1000 as shown here and press OK and you'll notice the C1 field now moves to 1000 feet. In addition to viewing the TDR in a graphical format you can also view the results in a list format. To do this press the third soft key results and select the third option list. At the top of this screen you see the faults detected and the distance to them. In this case, the list view shows an open at 1,014 feet. The screen also shows voltage snapshots for AC and DC voltage measurements, a leakage resistance snapshot, and a longitudinal balance measurement at the bottom of the screen. If you want to toggle back to the graphical format, simply press the third soft key, Results, and select the third option, Graph. Now that we're familiar with the Auto ID, let's use it to check for a common impairment such as a bridge tap. Verify the TVG adjust setting is correct and press the fourth soft key, Start TDR, to begin testing. Once again, the Auto ID performs a series of tests voltage, leakage resistance, longitudinal balance, and TDR. This series is critical because while a TDR is an excellent tool for detecting faults across tip and ring, it's not well suited for detecting ground faults such as resistive shorts to ground or battery cross. In this example, the Auto ID detects a bridge tap and two reflective events. One of the reflective events is the end of the bridge tap and the other reflective event is the open at the end of the pair. Let's compare the TDR graph with the snapshot results. To do this, press the third soft key results and select the third option list. This particular example is interesting because in addition to the bridge tap and reflective events shown at the top of the screen, the resistance snapshot shows a short across tip and ground. As we said earlier, a TDR is strong at showing resistive faults across tip and ring, but not so good at showing resistive faults from tip or ring to ground. So it speaks to the TDR's strength, perceived weakness, and true weakness all on one screen. As you've seen, the Auto ID TDR mode can be an excellent tool to help you troubleshoot your copper pairs for service. To exit and return to the main copper measurements menu, press cancel.